I'm Mohamed Mikati. I'm a, a pediatric neurologist and uh, epilepsy specialist. Uh, I'm chief of child neurology at Duke University, professor of uh, pediatrics and uh, uh, professor of neurobiology uh, at uh, that university. And uh, I've been involved with AHC uh, since the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, when I was uh, at Boston Children's, uh, where I met a family with AHC, and we reported that family as the first family showing that this is a genetic disease. And uh, uh, since then, I've uh, continued to be interested in uh, uh, AHC. I, uh, we did the uh, uh, USA registry in the 90s and uh, reported those, uh, inf that data in 2000, and then uh, in 2008, uh, uh, came to Duke where I did. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, I, uh, at Duke, I uh, collaborated with uh, uh, David Goldstein, uh, and uh, we joined forces to study uh, AHC genetics. And he organized uh, an international consortium uh, to uh, 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 study the genetics of. Uh, 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 AHC, and uh, we were able to discover the gene uh, at Duke in 2012. Uh, and uh, uh, since then, uh, I've been able to uh, organize a clinic uh, at Duke, multidisciplinary clinic that addresses the needs of uh, the patients, uh, 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 and uh, to collaborate with uh, uh, colleagues uh, uh, in. Uh, 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 Europe, in Australia, and in the U.S. Uh, to form the International uh, Alternating Hemiplegia of Childhood uh, Re Research Consortium, uh, which uh, um, uh, I uh, work on with uh, uh, Alexei Arzimanoglu and uh, uh, Ros uh, Rosaria Vavasori from Italy. We uh, uh, um, uh, 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 organize uh, uh, with uh, other members of uh, the uh, consortium uh, uh, activities, uh, scientific activities, uh, research, uh, to try and understand the disease uh, more. Uh, and uh, uh, we are conducting also uh, studies at, at Duke, uh, uh, including uh, uh, the uh, development generation of uh, uh, two mouse models for AHC. Uh, 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 we uh, started uh, that uh, 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 two years ago. We, uh, I got a grant uh, from Duke to, to generate the mouse, uh, uh, the first mouse, and then uh, we got uh, uh, the second mouse also the same way. And uh, we've shown uh, that uh, 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 these mice uh, show the manifestations of the human disease uh, and uh, are very excited about that because uh, uh, um, uh, they not only they ma manifest the uh, uh, symptoms uh, of hemiplegia, dystonia, seizures, behavioral abnormalities that patients have, but also we are able to study the physiology and we're finding some very exciting uh, uh, things. Uh, on the one hand, uh, we find that uh, the brains of these mice uh, have a phenomenon called spreading depression which is known to be a manifestation of increased excitability and has been shown in uh, animal models of uh, hemiplegic migraine. These are patients who have uh, migraine that causes them to be hemiplegic, kind of very similar to what the alternating hemiplegia patients have. They, they have hemiplegia. Uh, previous studies have shown that spreading depression is the reason for the hemiplegia in models of hemiplegic migraine. And what we have shown in our uh, model, uh, the mouse model of alternating hemiplegia, is that they too are predisposed to spreading depression. So we can show that in the lab, uh, in slices, uh, brain slices, uh, in these mice. And now we are screening for medications that we hope uh, once we find medications that are hopefully effective, then uh, uh, we hope to translate that into uh, uh, clinical uh, studies. Uh, uh, the other thing that we have been able to achieve uh, uh, in the study of uh, uh, the, uh, our mouse uh, uh, model is uh, to show uh, that they have uh, abnormalities in neurotransmission 
the, the, in the brain there are two main neurotransmitters, uh, one GABA which is inhibitory and reduces electrical activity, and the other glutamate which is excitatory and increases electrical activity. And we, what we are finding is that GABA is particularly decreased uh, in, uh, in these uh, mice, and uh, that uh, the number of cells uh, uh, that have GABA is decreased, not just the function but also the number. And uh, we, we are now uh, starting studies to understand, one, uh, how we can correct for that by, if, uh, by screening medications that hopefully may be able to correct for that, and two, to try to find out why this decrease in the number of cells is there in order to hopefully try to prevent it. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the study of the uh, mouse model is uh, 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 opening for us many avenues for hope, for uh, discovery, uh, to understand what's going on and hopefully to treat it. Part of what we are uh, looking at uh, through the International AHC Research Consortium with uh, Dr. Arzimanoglu and uh, Rosaria Vavasori is uh, potentially starting new uh, therapies and one of the proposals that we got uh, that uh, uh, we uh, will be discussing uh, just in a uh, uh, next tomorrow actually uh, is uh, the possibility of starting a, a, a cannabidiol CBD which is uh, uh, an extract of uh, hemp uh, the, for the treatment of uh, uh, alternating hemiplegia uh, of childhood and uh, it turns out that uh, uh, CBD has been uh, 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 given uh, um, orphan status uh, uh, f uh, in Europe uh, uh, or in, in many countries in Europe uh, for the treatment of uh, uh, certain types of epilepsy. Uh, it, tur it turns out uh, uh, that uh, uh, CBD is uh, protective for the brain against toxicity induced uh, by Wabain. Uh, Wabain is a medication which inhibits ATP1A3. So you could inhibit ATP1A3 by having a mutation in it, and that's what causes alternating hemiplegia of childhood, and you could inhibit uh, uh, ATP1A3 by giving Wabain. And if you give Wabain uh, to experimental animals, these are studies done many years ago, that hurts the neurons. And it turns out that CBD the, uh, can prevent that toxicity. So, so uh, it makes sense to think that maybe CBD can prevent the toxicity of the gene mutation that can uh, cause AHC. We don't know that for a fact, but uh, uh, to try CBD in patients with AHC is something to consider. Uh, of course, one has to do that thoughtfully after a lot of uh, 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 thought and planning and research uh, to make sure that uh, this, this is uh, uh, appropriate and that if it is done, it's done the right way. But uh, uh, this is another avenue of uh, investigation for <coughs> CBD, uh, for uh, uh, the treatment uh, of alternating hemiplegia of, ch <coughs> of childhood. I need some water. Uh, I think, as, as I mentioned, we, we really need to uh, study any new agent, whether it's CBD or anything else, very carefully and thoughtfully, uh, because uh, there will be a lot of ideas that can come along, and uh, I think uh, it is important to uh, target which ones to be studied and how to study them, and uh, that's what we hope to uh, uh, do in, in the uh, research consortium to try and work with uh, investigators uh, uh, within that consortium or even outside and also with uh, family groups and uh, industry to try and uh, facilitate and at the same time help uh, in the process of uh, uh, pushing uh, uh, the, the discoveries in the right way at the right pace. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I think this uh, uh, CBD is uh, 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 certainly a, a very uh, 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 attractive candidate, uh, uh, but we need to have the process uh, take uh, 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 its course. Uh, and uh, um, 
Uh, also, there are uh, other uh, research uh, uh, projects. Uh, the, the research consortium, uh, which was formed, actually, it was, it's one of the major advances in the uh, area of HC research that it was formed, uh, and it is now international. Uh, and the, uh, one of its first activities was the cardiac study that uh, Dr. Sisodia uh, uh, in University College of London uh, spearheaded and his group. And uh, basically, it showed that patients with AHC have cardiac rhythm abnormalities uh, that were not previously recognized, at least not to that, to that extent. And this is a major uh, uh, advance in our understanding of what the ATP1A3 uh, mutations uh, uh, may do or the, uh, uh, or the disease may do and uh, hopefully will help us understand the mechanisms of uh, the sudden unexpected death that sometimes uh, happens in a minority of uh, uh, patients with AHC. And uh, 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 parallel to that, we are now studying at Duke, we, we uh, are par uh, 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 joint forces with the a, a cardiac uh, a researcher uh, uh, who is also a specialist in cardiac rhythm abnormalities in the lab that we and we're studying the rhythm problems in the uh, mice that we have so hopefully some uh, insights may be gained from from that too so so this is another area that uh, 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 clinical studies and basic science studies are are uh, uh, going hand in hand uh, the other uh, major advance in, in the past few months uh, came was in better understanding of the uh, sodium potassium pump dysfunction that occurs with ATP1A3. Uh, the, the work uh, uh, from Austa Australia by Dr. Petru uh, showed that the, depending on what mutation you may have, you can have different abnormalities in the uh, uh, function of that uh, uh, pump. For example, uh, the D801N mutation and 947 mutation uh, affect the exchange of sodium and potassium only, whereas the mutations, uh, mutations that are E815K affect the exchange of sodium and potassium and also the proton uh, um, uh, transport uh, that can occur also uh, through the AT, uh, ATP1A3. Uh, so uh, it seems that uh, the A815K that has a uh, more severe phenotype has additional abnormalities uh, that result from the mutation. So that's an, an insight. Uh, also very exciting is the, uh, are the uh, studies coming from uh, Denmark uh, uh, that uh, have shown that uh, you can correct this uh, abnormality in sodium potassium uh, exchange uh, uh, if you add another mutation. So uh, there are gain of function mutations. The usually the uh, uh, or all the AHC mutations are loss of function. There is less function, but as far as we know but uh, they found that the, you, they can induce a gain of function mutation in another part of the, mu uh, of the ATP1A3 uh, gene that can compensate for the loss of function mutation uh, that causes AHC. So this was, of course, in, in, in the lab, in, uh, in cells, uh, but uh, that also opens uh, another uh, uh, avenue for uh, hope for uh, possible therapies that may be developed, uh, and uh, for example, gene therapy. And uh, uh, at Duke, we, we have already partnered with uh, um, the uh, genetics group to uh, do gene therapy uh, uh, in our uh, mice uh, uh, by putting the uh, actual uh, healthy gene into the uh, um, uh, the, the mice and see if we can correct the uh, abnormality and then we will uh, try to look at maybe uh, putting the gene in sp specific target areas uh, uh, eventually uh, to see if uh, certain target areas are more likely to, to respond instead of kind of having it in, in all the brain. And potentially we could at some stage think about uh, uh, using some of these uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, gain of function mutations to try and correct that. So the, uh, the, uh, the uh, opportunities are increasing and uh, uh, the uh, discoveries in the ATP1A3 and AHC uh, field are accelerating.